Thanks for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Gary Lane. Today, what's next in the battle over abortion after that controversial Supreme Court leak? Democrats have very limited options, while pro-lifers say the fight over abortion is far from over. Former President Trump weighs in on the Supreme Court controversy in an exclusive interview with CBN News. And we'll look at what happened with the president's choice in that key Republican Senate primary in Ohio. Plus, a powerful new cyber threat is on the horizon. A new type of computer that could break America's secure electronic codes and information. Imagine you have a computer that can try every combination and can try hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these combinations in a matter of seconds. Well, they'll be able to break through that call and they can break through the encryption. And this is the threat that quantum computing poses. We'll tell you how members of both parties in Congress are working to protect the U.S. from quantum computers. And Grammy Award winning artist Zach Williams talks to CBN Studio 5. I have more probably, you know, days I get it wrong than I get it right. But, you know, I'm a work in progress and every day I'm trying to be more like Jesus. We'll hear about the message in his music and his upcoming new songs. Those stories and more today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. We begin with the reaction to the leak from the Supreme Court, indicating that it's ready to overturn Roe versus Wade. That would send the abortion issue back to the states. Democrats are furious about that possibility, but there doesn't seem to be much that they can do about it. Meanwhile, pro-life activists say the battle over abortion is far from over. Protesters on both sides of the abortion debate are turning out across the country in reaction to the leaked draft of a Supreme Court opinion overturning Roe versus Wade. I was happy that I saw um, the what they believe, what we believe should be the decision moving forward. It's horrible. It, it's so depressing. It's shocking. I can't believe it. Chief Justice John Roberts confirmed the draft is authentic, but said the decision is not final. He also called the leak an egregious breach and ordered an investigation to find out who did it. The opinion, written by Justice Alito in February, says Roe must be overruled and reportedly has the support of four other justices. We now have confirmation there are five votes to overturn Roe versus Wade clearly and unequivocally. There is a draft opinion. Nothing is final until the opinion comes out. With abortion, a case of this magnitude, you never say never, but... Uh, it would be very surprising if anyone changes their votes at this time. In the Senate, Republican leader Mitch McConnell blasted the leak as another attempt at pressuring the court. What's unique about today is this is the first time we've had somebody on the inside try to attack the institution. With Democrats expressing outrage at the draft ruling and calling for federal laws to protect abortion. It is our intention for the Senate to hold a vote on legislation to codify the right to an abortion in law. But such a bill can't get past a Senate filibuster. And one of the main Democratic holdouts, West Virginia's Joe Manchin, appears to be holding firm on keeping the filibuster. Can you prepare to support ending the filibuster to deal with Roe? Go ahead. No comment to make on basically uh, leaks and things of that sort. Let's wait to see everything. Comes. What about Meanwhile, legal experts and pro-life advocates say overturning Roe is just the beginning of the fight to end abortion in America. If the court overrules Roe versus Wade, that doesn't end the debate on abortion. It really just restores it and restarts it. So then it will be up to the legislatures, to the people's representatives in every individual state to pass abortion laws or restrictions as they see fit. This does not make things easier for the pro-life movement. In fact, it, it turns it from one fight into 50 fights. While abortion advocates point to national polls showing most Americans believe Roe should not be overturned, the states tell a different story, as legislatures across the country are passing laws restricting or banning abortion. Former President Donald Trump is speaking out on the controversy. In an exclusive interview, CBN's chief political analyst David Brody asked him about the leaked Supreme Court document. A Supreme Court, this big deal, Roe v. Wade, the, the Supreme Court now authenticating that draft uh, opinion by Sam Alito, in essence overturning Roe v. Wade. Were you surprised to see this? Well, we don't know exactly if that's true because it was certainly something that they're working on. It would imagine, I don't think anyone made it up. It sounded like him. He's a great man, by the way. He's a tremendous guy. But uh, as a justice, he's just 
fantastic. And, uh, and you have some, some great ones up there now. But we have to find out what that means. And is somebody going to do something about it? Are they going to try and change it? Uh, is it real? Nobody really knows. And they don't know who leaked it. I will say the leak was a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. You're just not used to that for the Supreme Court. We see it uh, so much leaking in our world, in your world, in my world. Mm -hmm. And although not so much now, it's very interesting. You know, you try and cover those leaks. But you've never seen it, or they've rarely seen it in the Supreme Court. It was very shocking, I think. I think it was a very bad thing for the court. Well, Chuck Schumer says it's all your fault, of course, if Roe v. Wade gets overturned. Obviously, he's talking about those three pro-life uh, Supreme Court justices. Yeah. Did you pack your thoughts? Well, a lot of people are very happy about that. So some people maybe say it's my fault, and some people say thank you very much. You can see David's interview with President Trump on today's 700 Club. And we'll have it tomorrow here on Newswatch. Well, the former president's abilities as a kingmaker were tested in the key state of Ohio yesterday. He came out a winner. The candidate Trump had endorsed, J.D. Vance, won the contentious primary to be the Republican nominee for the Senate race this fall. Vance is a former investment banker who wrote the best-selling book, Hillbilly Elegy. He was trailing in the polls when Trump endorsed him less than three weeks ago, an endorsement that paid off. Now, this campaign, I really think, was a referendum on what kind of a Republican Party we want and what kind of a country we want. We went to battle. Vance is likely to be the favorite in the race for the Ohio Senate seat this fall. Well, turning to the Middle East, Israel is demanding an apology from Russia after offensive remarks by the Kremlin's chief diplomat, calling Jews anti-Semitic and claiming Adolf Hitler had Jewish heritage. As Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, the incident risks an already fragile relationship between Israel and Russia. Just days after Israel remembered six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust by Adolf Hitler, Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said the Nazi leader was part Jewish. If I remember correctly, I may be wrong, but Hitler also had Jewish origins. So it doesn't mean absolutely anything. For some time, we've heard from the wise Jewish people that the biggest anti-Semites were Jewish. The statement shocked Israelis and brought swift and widespread reaction. Israeli Prime Minister Neftali Bennett and Israel's foreign minister Yair Lapid both condemned Lavrov's comments. The remarks of Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov are an unforgivable scandal. Hitler was not from Jewish descendants, and the Jews did not kill themselves during the Holocaust. We make every effort to keep good relations with Russia, but there's a limit. This time, the limit has been crossed. The government of Russia needs to apologize to us and to the Jewish people. Israel rebuked Russia's ambassador, while Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky wondered if Israel would go even further. So the question is whether the Israeli ambassador stays in Moscow knowing their new position, whether their relations with Russia remain as usual. Because all of this is not accidental. The words of the Russian foreign minister, a great connoisseur of Hitlerism, are not random. Middle East analyst Eli Kohenim told CBN News Lavrov's comments struck a chord among the Jewish people. First of all, he has his facts wrong to try to suggest that Adolf Hitler has any kind of Jewish lineage in him. And secondly, it is so deeply offensive to the Jewish people, both in Israel and around the world. Kohenim says Russia is trying to justify an unjustifiable war. And the way that they do that is they keep going back to this claim that they are denazifying Ukraine. And what it shows us is that they'll basically say or do anything in trying to justify what they just cannot. The diplomatic confrontation also presents a military challenge for Israel. Russia controls the airspace over Syria, and Israel depends on Russian cooperation to strike Iranian targets inside Syria. Without Russia's permission, it could see Iran's military presence grow dramatically on its northern border. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. In Ukraine itself, Russian forces unleashed artillery fire on towns in eastern Ukraine today, killing and wounding dozens of civilians. The governor of the eastern Donetsk region said Russian attacks left 21 dead on Tuesday. And in western Ukraine, a Russian cruise missile attack has targeted electrical substations in the city of Lviv. The attack came on Tuesday night after air raid sirens sounded throughout the country. 
The city's mayor said the attack damaged three electrical substations, cutting off electricity to parts of the city as lights flickered after the strike. Lviv has become a haven for those fleeing the war's front line in the east. And since the war began, refugees have been pouring into European countries like Poland. CBN's Operation Blessing has been there on the ground, providing them with food, water and other essentials. Hi, this is Daniel with Operation Blessing. We are now in the OB warehouse in Poland and we are preparing a truckload full of different items, primarily food. We are sending these to Ukraine today uh, and they will be distributing these items during the week. We are sending some pasta, we are sending some rice, we are sending oatmeal donations also that we have been receiving in the last week. Thanks for all your support, thanks for all your prayers. And this is a mixed truckload, primarily with food and some other essential items that will be really, really important to receive in Ukraine. CBN's Operation Blessing is providing refugees the assistance they need, and you can help in their disaster relief efforts. Call 1-800-700-7000. Say you want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund, and you can write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just put Disaster Relief Fund in the memo line of your check. And you can text us. Just text OB Crisis to 71777. Or you can go to our websites at CBN.com or Operation Blessing at OB.org. Anything you can do to help will be appreciated. Well, coming up, it could be a major national security threat in the future, so members of both parties are trying to get ready for it now. We'll tell you about the fight to protect America from new supercomputers that can break important codes when we come back. A bipartisan group of lawmakers is racing against time to pass legislation that could help protect America against a future cyber threat. It's called quantum computing, and it involves supercomputers that can quickly break through secure encryption codes. While this technology is still in development, experts warn that if we wait until it's online, we would be at risk. CBN's national security correspondent Caitlin Burke brings us that story. Encryption algorithms allow us to keep sensitive information secure when taking care of business or shopping online. Breaking these codes is nearly impossible, allowing governments and private citizens alike to depend on them. The emergence of quantum computing could put an end to that security. Imagine you have a computer that can try every combination and can try hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these combinations in a matter of seconds. Well, they'll be able to break through that code and they can break through the encryption. And this is the threat that quantum computing poses. Congressman Ro Khanna, along with a bipartisan group of lawmakers, recently introduced legislation that would require a strategy be put in place to provide federal systems with quantum-resistant encryption. It's also supported by several big tech companies, including Google and IBM. And what they're saying is, uh, for us to protect you, your data, for us to make sure that your uh, information is secure, we need to be ahead of this curve. They don't want people uh, cracking their code. Although experts admit this technology is far from operational, evidence shows American adversaries are already stealing data in order to decrypt it once quantum computers are online. They wait the however long, maybe 10 years, 15 years until there's a quantum computer, and then they can, they can get access to your data. Now, some of that data, 10 years down the road, that's okay. But there's, there's certain information that, that by law or by national security interests, we need to protect for a long time. So they would get access to your data before you would want them to. The National Institute for Standards and Technology has the responsibility of creating quantum-resistant encryption. One additional challenge will be that successful prevention can't be determined until it's tested by a functioning quantum computer. We don't know how fast a quantum computer will be. We don't know exactly how expensive it will be to run. So it, it, it's a little bit tricky to try and 
pick parameters to protect against that. Still, after a decade of research, NIST teams believe they've cracked the code. We launched basically a big international competition where we solicited the cryptographic community around the world to design new crypto systems, which would be safe from quantum computers. They then evaluated each submission, choosing several considered to be the most promising. Dustin Moody from the NIST Computer Security Division says in just a matter of weeks, those algorithms will be standardized and rolled out. For the average person, this will be handled kind of behind the scenes. You know, their, their browsers on the internet will start using the new technology, the products that companies are using. Um, they'll they'll start using it. The hope is that in a decade or so, when these supercomputers come along, the new encryption algorithms hold, allowing sensitive data to stay secure and out of the hands of our enemies. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Washington. Still ahead, our Studio 5 conversation with Grammy-winning Christian artist Zach Williams as we discuss the message behind his music and his upcoming new releases. We'll have that interview right after this. Less Like Me, Chain Breaker, Rescue Story, those are just a few singles from Zach Williams. The Grammy-winning Christian artist just wrapped up his U.S. tour with Ann Wilson. And CBN Studio 5 was invited to catch up with the award-winning artist backstage this past weekend to hear the message behind the music and find out what new songs he's releasing soon. End of the tour. How does it feel? We're only a few hours away from you taking the stage and we're sitting here right now. It feels good uh, to be kind of ready for a break. It's been the, maybe one of the best tours I've done. Uh, it's, been, it's been great. Many stops sold out, yeah. so people have been waiting for you. <laughs> I guess so, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah. It's just been a lot of fun. What can't you leave the stage without singing? I imagine that if you were to try to yeah. walk off and not do, what would those? We do about 18 songs a night. Um, so out of those 18, I've, I've got about eight songs that I need to definitely play every night. But Chain is the one I think that could probably get me in trouble if I didn't pull that one out. So. I think for my music, I have my fan base. It's, it's it's kind of across the board, you know. I have a lot of people that are are music lovers, and they want to come and, and hear songs and sit and listen to the lyrics. And then um, and then we have that crowd base that's it's also you know they're ready to come and um, you know sing along all night long. And so it's it's great. I, I love it. The tune I'm listening to from Zach Williams these days more often than not, is less like me. Yeah. What's the story behind that? You know, I just wanted an honest, an honest song. You know, I think, uh, I think a lot of time, uh, maybe, maybe I'm the only one that feels this way. Maybe there's other Christian artists that feel this way, but I feel like people kind of put you on a pedestal and they think that because, uh, you know, what you do for a living, then your life must be perfect and you must have it all together. <laughs> um, and it's so far from that. You know, I have, I have more probably, you know, days I get it wrong than I get it right. But you know, I'm a work in progress and. Every day I'm trying to be more like Jesus, and so that song for me was just kind of an honest look in my day-to-day -day life of, hey, this is this is the real me, but I'm I'm trying to be more like him.
when do you sit down and write some more music? I've actually got a new record coming out this fall. You um, do? I've, I've been writing music for about the last year and a half. Um, got quite a bit of songs coming out. Got a new single coming out this summer. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. What can you tell me about it? I will say the song that I'm putting out this summer uh, is unlike any song I've put out. I would say it's a message that I've wanted to, to put out in a song for quite a while. Uh, I haven't, haven't released anything quite like this, and I'm pretty excited about it. For more entertainment stories, tune in to Studio 5 tonight at 8.30 Eastern on the CBN News Channel or anytime on the CBN News app. Coming up, tomorrow, believers will be coming together across the country to pray for America. We'll tell you more about that when we come back, so stay with us. We want to remind you that tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. And this year, the event is joining forces with Pray.com to host a prayer gathering for America with a 90-minute broadcast on CBN News and other partner stations. The prayers for the country focus on seven centers of influence, including the government, media, business, education, church, and family. And again, CBN News will carry the live stream of the 2022 National Day of Prayer broadcast at 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. Be sure to tune in to watch and find out more on CBNNews.com. Well, that's it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel anytime or online with CBNNews.com. Also, tell us what you think about the stories you've seen by emailing newswatch at CBN.com or talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Have a blessed day.